and Nick joins us. Now, Nick, I hope you're keeping warm. It seems like you are. It's the start of the electoral process for the Republicans. So take us through the process tonight. Yeah, I'm nice and warm at the moment at the main media centre here in the convention centre in Des Moines, Iowa. Not braving the cold myself, but of course the candidates are hoping that their supporters will do just that tonight. They need to get their voters out to turn up in person. 7 p.m. local time is caucus time. And that's the time when about 1,600 different venues right across the state, often small venues, places like high schools, churches, uh, very small local areas, where people can go to caucus for their candidate. Now, that means for the Republicans, getting people in the room together. There may be some speeches, potentially, uh, from uh, some of the very ardent supporters for the different candidates. We might hear from someone who supports Donald Trump, say, for example, another person who supports Nikki Haley, trying to win over the other people in the room. And then the Republicans in the room get that opportunity to write the name of the candidate that they've chosen on a piece of paper. It's a secret ballot. Those are counted and then we get the votes later on tonight. Those polls predicting potentially a very big win for Donald Trump. He is 48% uh, in the lead according to the latest polling that we saw over the weekend. That's about a 28 point lead on his nearest rival Nikki Haley which is a huge number going into today. He is very confident about winning. He's even put out fundraising emails saying that he will get a big win tonight but he's also concerned about turnout at his last rally over the weekend, he said to people that even if they were sick as a dog, they should get out and vote. And even if they voted and then passed away, the former president saying that would be worth it. He needs those votes. He wants those votes. He's hoping for a big win later on tonight. Yeah, I've seen some responses um, on, on X and other platforms to that particular statement. Uh, it's certainly drumming up a lot of conversation. But uh, Trump, let's not forget, Nick faces court uh, challenges and he does enjoy the support of the Republican Party. Is the party not worried that these court cases might pose a challenge uh, a little bit later on? <clears throat> Well, there certainly does seem to be some concern there in the background, but at this stage, the Republican Party is still very much behind the former president and his supporters still very much behind him as well. Remember, the former president, of course, says that the four criminal cases that he'll be facing later this year, the civil court case that's currently going on that could strip him of his Trump organization business, he says that all of those cases are politically motivated, things that have been concocted by the Democrats to try and prevent him from running for election once again, from re-entering the White House. He says that that is therefore a political witch hunt. And it is that message that has helped very much to get his voters behind him. The base uh, in the Republican Party still report, uh, re representing for Donald Trump, even though we have that criminal jeopardy just down the road. In theory, his first criminal trial will be starting in Washington, D.C. at the beginning of March, a time when we will still have these state votes going on. And I think that's partly why Donald Trump wants to get such a big win tonight to show that he has that support and to give him more momentum as we head to the other state contests. Of course, the New Hampshire primaries uh, just over a week away. That'll be the second state and Donald Trump will be hoping if he wins big tonight, he'll have the momentum heading into that second round of voting uh, in New Hampshire next week. Well, beyond, beyond the hall, um, in a sense, uh, Nick, on international issues, what are the views of candidates in the war in, in the Ukraine and the current conflict in the Middle East? Yeah, that of course has become a big topic for the candidates, something that they've spoken about. Donald Trump saying that he would end it in just one day, not really exactly saying how he would achieve that, but there is that fear that he could potentially try and push for resolution, ceasefires, peace deals in both of those con uh, conflicts that for Ukraine's point of view might not be that favorable for them, giving away territory that Russia has captured in the almost two year conflict. Uh, so it, it is something that is central, that foreign policy. Many Republicans, of course, don't want to continue funding the war in Ukraine. They feel that that would be money better spent here at home in the US. Uh, that funding deal that's working its way through uh, Washington DC through Congress uh, being tied uh, to security on the southern border. Republicans very much wanting a massive injection of cash to prevent the thousands of illegal migrants that are entering the US over that US-Mexico border. So immigration 
immigration a big topic, foreign policy and funding foreign wars also a big topic uh, and something that these candidates have been campaigning on. Nick Harper, thank you very much um, for the updates.